one at the sound of my voice. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and continually rejoice and be glad in it. Happy Monday. Happy Monday to you and your loved ones, wherever you are at the sound of my voice. Happy Monday to you. Blessed Monday to you. Send a shout of blessings to you wherever you are in your house. I declare that all is well. All is well with you and your house in Jesus' name. Well, what is the question today? The question is, what is God like? <laughs> what is God like? A lot of people have these questions and every now and then it pops up. You know, I hear about God. You know, there's God. There, there, you know, God did this. God created the heavens and the earth. The sea and all that is within. God did this. God did that. God that, that, that. But what is God like? What is God like? Have, have you thought about that? You know, others have. I don't know if that is your question as well. What is God like? What is God like? Well, we know by scripture that God has a personality. We know by scripture that God has a personality. God has feelings. Okay. God has feelings. God, um, God has emotions. <laughs> God loves. Okay. God cares. All right. Uh, uh, Penki Chinario sent a shout of blessings to you out there in India. India will send a shout of blessings to you. All right. God has emotions. God has feelings. God hears. What is God like? The question today is, what is God like? God has a personality. Today, I want us to uh, try and address some things that may be of a concern to somebody. All right. The question is, what is God like? God has a personality. God has emotions. God cares. God loves. The uh, Bible says that he's touched with our needs. God is touched with our needs. And, um, and God hates. He hates certain things. So God is a person, okay, with these personalities. God is a person with these personalities. And so I want us to, you know, look at a couple areas of scripture um, that will help you to understand <clears throat> who God is. God is a spirit at the same time. Mm -hmm. He's a spirit. God is eternal truth. God is eternal truth. And uh, God never changes. Mm -hmm. That's, that's the, the other side uh, that somebody said, that, that's a mystery then. Yes, it is a mystery that you need to have that understanding. And so let's get into the word of God today. And a look into a couple areas by scripture, okay, of what God is. Michael Lewis said, I send a shout of blessings to you as well and your house. Please be a blessing. Share the broadcast to somebody. All right. Share this. Like it. And today we are, we are broadcasting live only from the Facebook. And so... Share it. Um, you can put it on, um, you know, other platforms of yours, your groups, and all that, and uh, be a blessing. That will be a blessing to somebody. All right. Somebody has this question: What is God like? I, I want to see how. I want to see him. I want to understand him. And so, number one, we said God is a great force. God is a great force, but He's also a person or has a personality. God has emotions. The Bible tells you and I that God loves. Look at John 3, 16. You will see that it says, for God so loves. So God, you know, has that 
you know, emotional love. Mm -hmm. All right, with the positive one. We have positive emotions and negative emotions. And so God loves, all right? And so please know that God loves. Through John 3, 16, you will see that there, that God loves. We are talking about what God is like. Okay, so we are looking at some areas of him and for you to understand or get a, a picture of who God is. God cares. Number one, God loves. John 3, 16, we see that. For God so loved the world, he sent his only begotten son, Jesus, um, to, to come and save us from our eternal sins. Sins that would take us into eternal damnation. For God so loved, he sent Jesus. So God loves. Okay, that's one of the, the, the side of him that you need to know. God loves. Number two, God cares. He cares. He cares for you. Um, uh, somebody said, well, God don't care about me and all that. Beloved, don't believe that. God cares. Look at 1 Peter 5 and 7. You see that there. God cares. He cares for you and for me. He has to care, okay, to express that love, that for which he sent Jesus to come and um, save us from eternal damnation. Please share this broadcast to somebody, all right? And then God hates. He hates sin. God does not hate the sinner, but God hates sin. Listen to this again. God does not hate the sinner, but God hates sin. All right? Look at Romans chapter 9 and the 13 verse. God hates sin. God hates sin. He does not hate the sinner. But he hates the sin. That's why he sent Jesus to come and redeem you and me. He, because he doesn't hate us. He loves us. And so he sent Jesus to come and redeem you and me from sin. Because he hates sin. Sin, sin got Adam and Eve from their comfort zone of the Garden of Eden. Sin took them out of the presence of God. Sin will not bring you to the presence of God. Sin brings a, a, a separation between you and God. And so God loves you, but he hates the sin and he does not hate the sinner. Therefore, God sent Jesus to come and redeem you and me from sin. He did not come Jesus didn't come to condemn us. He came to reconcile us to God. I want you to get, get the difference here. And I hope I'm, I'm, I'm making a clear distinction for you. God does not like or God does not hate the sinner. God hates sin, not the sinner. But he rather loves you and me, who are sinners, that he sent Jesus to come and redeem us from sin. Take the sin away from us because he loves you and he loves me. So God does not hate you. You may, you probably, you know, so I don't know whether somebody have told you that or that's, that is what you believe. That God hates me. I'm going through all that I'm going through because God hates me. God don't like me. If God liked me, why would I be going through this? And why would I be going through that? Please like this, like it and share this broadcast. Somebody need to hear this. All right. God does not hate you. Rather, God loves you. John 3, 16 tells you and I, for God so loved you and me in the world that he sent his only begotten son, Jesus, to come and redeem us from what he hates. That is sin. God hates sin. And so that's another personality of God. 
Now look at Hebrews chapter 4, the 14th and the 15th verse. Scripture tells you and I that God is touched by our needs. God is touched by our needs. You see? And so we are, we are looking at, we are looking at the, you know, the personality of God. What is God like? If you ever, you know, come across that question, let these be your answers. What is God like? If somebody asks you, so uh, uh, what, what is this person like? Where well, you'll, be, you'll be speaking about the personality of that individual. And so is God. God loves. God cares. Huh? God hates. And God is touched with our needs. He's also a spirit. He's also a spirit. God is a spirit. Scripture says that they that worship him must do that in spirit and in truth. Look at John chapter 4, verse 24. John chapter 4, verse 24. God is a spirit. And those who worship him must worship him in spirit and, and truth. We must worship him in spirit and truth. Apostle Paul added something to this, and I want to share that with you. He says, God is a spirit, and where he is, there is liberty. God is a spirit, and where God is, there is liberty, there's freedom. And so God wants you to, you know, to em enjoy the freedom of having him closer to you. Where God is, there is liberty, there's freedom. Look at 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17. You see that there? That where there is, where God is, there is liberty. You see, God does not hate you. It doesn't matter. God hates the sin that you and I were once in or some of you are still in. God hates that. But he does not hate you. He created you for a good purpose. And so therefore, don't believe that God hates you. He loves you. But he does not love the sin in which you find yourself living in. God does not like that. He hates sin. He doesn't hate the sinner. Get that revelation here. Very important that we do this. Let me send a shout of blessings to Hi Opal. All right. So God hates sin, not the sinner. That's why you don't need to be condemning, you know, people because they they, they sin. Listen, are, are you are you somebody who have never sinned before? Maybe you know. I mean, you you see yourself now as you know, having a better understanding of your relationship with God. Well, you were once not at, at, at this place. And so somebody may find themselves in that place as living in sin. You and I have to do this. Try and make sense, bring them out of that place. Let them know that God loves them but he does not like or love the sin in which they are living in. God does not hate the sinner. He hates sin. And so, and so, and so God, God does not hate you. Please, please, please don't, don't ever forget that. And God never changes. We're talking about what God is like. And so we're looking at the personality of him as well. God never changes. Now, if you, if you come to the book of Hebrews, chapter 1, verse 11, and Hebrews 13, 8. Hebrews 1, 11, and Hebrews 13, 8. Let's look at it real quick. All right? Make, make um, some sense here. Look at Hebrews. Come with me to Hebrews and let's look at that. 
Hebrews chapter um, Hebrews chapter 1 verse 11. Look at Hebrews chapter 1 verse 11. Hebrews chapter 1 and the 11 verse. Real quick, let's do it. Let's do that. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 11. Oh, thank you, Lord. Let's see here. Where is it? All right. So Hebrews chapter 1. Look at 11. They will perish, but you remain, and they will all grow old like a garment. And now, now look at, look at um, the 12. Look at the 12. Look at the 12. Hebrews chapter chapter 1, Hebrews 1, 12. Like a cloak, you will fold them up, and they will be changed. But you are the same, and your years will not fail. You see, are you getting the revelation here? Now, look at Hebrews, the 13th chapter, and the 8th verse. Hebrews 13 and 8. Jesus Christ, okay, the Lord is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Jesus Christ, the Lord, is the same yesterday, today, and forever. You see, God gives that assurance of his eternal love and care for you and I. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Number one, we have established that God is a spirit. He's a person, he has a personality. Huh? He has a personality of why do we, we say that? Because he demonstrates his love, his care, um, his hate, okay, for things that we, you know, he does not embrace. That is sin, you see. And so we need to have that understanding. Now, God manifests himself also in Jesus. God manifests himself in Jesus. And that's why you see where I just, we read, just read here in Hebrews um, 13, 8. Because God is the same. He never changes. Mm -mm. He's the same scripture say he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And so don't ever think that, well, God has changed his mind concerning you. And therefore you are going through all that you are going through just because God has turned his back against you. Beloved, no, God has not turned his back against you. God does not like sin, but he does not hate the sinner. God hates sin, but not the sinner. I hope you understand the difference. If you do say amen. Or say, so, and, and again, God manifests himself through Jesus. Listen to this. One day Philip asks what God is like, and Jesus answered this question by saying, uh, uh, by saying the same attributes the son possesses as uh, the son possesses are the attributes of God. The qualifications of Jesus are the attributes of God. How's that? The qualifications of Jesus are the attributes of God. Jesus loved, Jesus cares, Jesus hated sin, Jesus you know, uh, 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 bears with our needs. These are the attributes of God. Look at, look at John chapter 14, 8 to 11. Look at John 14, 8 to 11. I want to show you something here. Look at John 14, verses 8 to 11. Let's see something here. This is what Philip asks Jesus. Philip said to, to Jesus, actually, he said, Lord, show us the Father God and it will be sufficient for us. Jesus responded to, to uh, Philip and said this, have I been with you so long and yet you have not known me, 
Philip, he who has seen me has seen the Father, God. So how can you say, show us the Father? Obviously, Philip didn't have that understanding that the attributes of God is seen in Jesus. The attributes of God is seen in Jesus. You see, the attributes of God is seen in Jesus. Jesus possesses the, the, the attributes of God. And so Philip should have known, oh, this is God in action right here in our face through Jesus. But he didn't. He didn't. And so are many right now who do not or have not come to that level of understanding. And so it's very important that you and I who have this understanding should educate others, tell others what God is like. So if somebody asks you what God is like, you will be able to tell that individual that this is God in action. Watch this now again. Watch this now again. Verse 8, 9, verse 8 and 9, okay, of Hebrews chapter, uh, sorry, 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 John, John chapter 14, John chapter 14, 8 to 11. Watch this now. Philip said to Jesus, Lord, show us the Father and it is sufficient for us. Jesus said to him, have I been with you so long and yet you have not known me, Philip? He who has seen me, he's telling Philip this, he who has seen me has seen the Father. So how can you say, show us the Father? Verse 10, do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father in me? The words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own authority. But the Father who dwells in me does the works. Get that revelation here. So Jesus is telling Philip that what you see is the attribute of who God is. I am, I am, I am demonstrating to you of who God is. I care. I share. I love, I hate. Get the revelation here. You see, that is who God is. So we are looking at who is God like. And we can only see that in Jesus. Because God manifests himself through Christ. Lane Thompson, God bless you and your house. All right. God manifests himself through Jesus. So if you want to look at the attributes or to know who God is, look at Jesus. And that is what Jesus was telling Philip. That I've been with you all this while and you, you don't know. Jamaica, send a shout of blessings to you and your house. Please like this and share this broadcast to somebody who has have this question for so long, what is God like? And these are the answers. God is like what we see in Jesus. He loves. John 3.16 tells us that. For God so loved. God loves. God loves. Uh, 1 Peter 5.7. God cares. He cares. And God is touched with our needs. We can see that in Hebrews 4 as well, 14, 15. And God hates, God hates, what does God hate? God hates sin. Again, let me reemphasize, God hates sin, but not the sinner. Because Jesus did not come for nothing. He didn't come for the animals. He came for the sinner. Huh? To redeem us from sin. That's why he did not come to condemn us sinners, but he came to redeem us from sin, take us out of the, the imprisonment of sin and bring us as free people 
to where God is. Because where God is, there is freedom, there is liberty. Get that revelation here. You see, so we are looking at what God is like. And this is what he looks like. God, God, Jesus demonstrates the attributes of God. And so he was telling Philip in, in John 14, verse 8 to 11. He says, have I been with you all this while, Philip? And you, you are asking me to show you who God the Father is. He says, verse 10, do, do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father in me? The words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does the works. Look at verse 11. He says, believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me. Or else, believe me for the sake of the works themselves. So Jesus was telling Philip or showing Philip or demonstrating to Philip or getting the attention of Philip for Philip to know that to answer that question, show us the Father. What is God like? Well, Philip, look at look 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 at what you are seeing. That is because to know God is to see the attributes of Him. To know God is to see the attributes, and His the attributes of Him. Is found in me, Jesus. Jesus said to, to Philip. You see. So, God loves you. He loves you. And that is why you have to come to him. He doesn't hate you. You probably thinking God hates you. And you, know, you are going to hell. And all this, you know, um, um, uh, judgmental prophets out there. <laughs> you are going to hell. You know, you, your, your sin is so grievous. You, you're not going to amount to anything. You know, hell has your passport. Uh, hell has a room waiting for you. You're going to hell. Listen, let me tell you something. You ain't going to hell. You're going to heaven. What you have to do is to know that God loves you. Come to him. Come to him through Jesus. Come to him through Jesus. Give your life to Jesus. Welcome Jesus into your heart. How do you do that? Well, you believe with your heart, don't you? You believe with your heart. And what you believe, you speak about. And that's exactly what you have to do. Scripture says you believe him in your heart. That God raised him from the dead. You confess with your mouth. You believe him in your heart. And you confess him with your mouth. You'll be saved. You'll be delivered. That's as simple as that. I found out that another, there's another religion, there's a, a, a religion that believes the same way of how one can become a member of, of, um, of that religion by, by believing and confessing the, 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 the leader of that, of that religion. Well, I said, it sounds like Christianity. He says, yeah. Well, we, that's why we say that if you don't understand anything in, in, a, in our book, you know, make reference to the Bible. I say, wow, really? You might, as well, you might as well all become Christians then. Why that, you know, if I don't understand something, I have to make reference to the Bible. Might I just go straight up. You see. And so I want you to know today, God loves you. He just don't like what you have found yourself in, in that sinful life. He hates the sin. But he does not hate the sinner. And so give your life to him. Come close to him. There's freedom. There's liberty where God is. There's liberty where God is. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 3, 17. Real quick. Very, very, very quick. All right. Time is up. Look at it. 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17. Look at it. Look at it. Verse 17. 2 Corinthians 3, 17. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. There is liberty. Where the Lord is, there is liberty. There is liberty. So your liberty is in God through Christ Jesus. Your freedom 
is in God through Christ Jesus. Your emancipation. Use all the adjectives. Because for you to know what God is like, look at Jesus. And Jesus says, because he is in the Father, and the Father is in him, that's why you see. Jesus did not condemn the prostitute. Jesus, as, mu as much as sinners wanted to, to crucify the prostitute, Jesus says, no, I didn't come to condemn you. I came to reconcile you, take you out of that sinful nature and bring you to your rightful place. And that is where God is. People will condemn you. Very interesting that sin sinful people are, the, are, are so quick to condemn other sinful people. It's amazing. That is so amazing that sinful people or sinners are so quick to condemn another sinner. But you see, God loves you. He doesn't condemn you. Jesus didn't come to condemn. He came to redeem. He came to save you and me from that eternal condemnation. Because sin will put you into eternal condemnation. You see. So come to Jesus. Give your life to Jesus today. Come to him. How do you do that? By be you re believing him in your heart. And confessing him with your mouth. Let me show you right now. And do, let's do it together. Let's do it together. Say, Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sins. I am a sinner. Forgive me of my sins. Come into my heart. Be the Lord and Savior of my life. I believe you in my heart. And I confess you with my mouth. You, God, you, Lord Jesus, that God raised you from the dead. From this day forth, Lord, baptize me with your spirit that I may live free from sin and enjoy my freedom with God. Amen. That, that's it? Yes. If you sincerely, if you sincerely from your heart make that confession, make that um, assertion. Yes, indeed. Jesus told Nicodemus, um, the, the, um, the well-known teacher of the law in the days of old. He said, Nicodemus, one must be born again. Born again, when you hear that word, it's not any sophisticated word. It's, it's as simple as having a spiritual rebirth. Spiritual rebirth. There's a transformation that has taken place by making that confession from your heart through your mouth. So if you did that, you are born again. Now, don't stop right there because you need to start walking with God and His Spirit, okay, will be guiding you and teaching you and directing you and all that for you to come in alignment with the plan of God for your life. For you to fulfill it. And so make sure that you get a copy of your Bible. Get, a, get your Bible. If you don't have one, please write to us. All right. The number for you to reach to reach out to us is very simple. You can use 914-572-9816. You can do that. Okay. Use that one or get to our website and you will see where you can you know, plug in your information, we will send you a Bible. The address is www.patrickquaino, Q-U-A-I-N-O-O, globalministries.org. Patrickquaino, globalministries.org. Go to that website. It's a lot of information out there also for you to see and to know us even more. And request for your Bible, we'll send one to you free of charge. No charge. Yes, I want to also thank you, all right, for listening. And uh, finally, finally, go to our YouTube channel and subscribe to get this and more of the messages. 
go to the YouTube channel. When you get to the YouTube, the same name, use that Patrick Quenu Ministries, and uh, you'll be able to do that. Subscribe and get this message and even more. All right? And so I want to say thank you for listening to this, making time with me, but very importantly, share this broadcast, like it and share it, and let somebody, and send it to your friends and loved ones. Somebody need to hear this, that Jesus doesn't hate you. If Jesus did, he would not have come as God the Father sent him. And so God doesn't hate you either. John 3, 16 tells you and I, that for, 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 for God so love the world in which you and I are part of, he sent Jesus to come and uh, redeem us from our sinful um, nature. Jesus paid the price of our sins. And therefore, when you embrace Jesus, when you accept Jesus, you have come into the family and the household of God. So receive Jesus. As I present him to you, I thank you for your time. Make this the best day of your life if you have not received Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Do that. Tell others about the goodness of Jesus. Witness to people about Jesus because he is the embodiment of God, Jesus demonstrates all that God is and more. All right? So as always, you don't have no trouble. I'm ending with you now. I'll come to you again. Today we are broadcasting only from this area of Facebook, trying to put certain things together uh, in our system. And so bear with us, those of you who probably usually catch us on other platforms simultaneously like the YouTube or the Twitters and all that. But share it, share it. Those of you who know other friends of yours who are part of this ministry, share it to them. Let them know that we are broadcasting from here, probably this week as well. All right. But stay with us. I'll see you on Wednesday, God willing. Same time, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time right here in the United States. Until then, I want you to know you don't have no trouble. All you need is your faith in God. And in all that getting, get understanding. I'll see you soon. God bless you.